Hello, this is Mark from IMNG Organic, and welcome to our 60-day update on our potatoes being grown in the back-to-eating style in wood chips versus fall leaves. The variety is dark red Norland potato. It's a red potato, and it's an early variety. And they were both planted on the same date uh, in a 300-foot row in wood chips and also in leaves, which I'll show you later. So let's start with the wood chip side, or the back to Eden method. Now, it's been uh, 30 days since my last video, and they were just starting to come out of the ground, but a lot of things have happened and has gone wrong. As you can see here, there's very little foliage left. We had a huge attack of Colorado potato beetles. And you can see here, we had very little foliage left. We had a very high influx of Colorado potato beetles laying their eggs since the larvae uh, was born. They jump on the potato leaves immediately and they start eating and there's anywhere from uh, 10 to 30 per plant that will just eat, chew it down to the ground within two days. Now you can see here there's very little foliage left except for the stems. Um, and I'd like to explain something at this point too. I am certified organic and I'm allowed to spray certain things on there to kill them off, but I choose not to do that. I'm The project here that I'm trying to do and also on my farm is not to spray anything. It is Even if it's approved by certified organic methods, it's not approved by me. I do not wish to do it. I have too many people with food allergies, uh, people that have brain cancer and other types of cancer that come to my farm and I refuse to do any type of spraying. It has to be purely natural. Let's just take a look at some of the areas that they went over and attacked. Now, my only defense was is to come out here and pick them off and also I spray them off with a garden hose. And I put a strainer on the side and I try to catch them and then I dump them into a bucket of uh, soapy water and kill them off. Now, you can only do that for so much and for so long. Uh, this row is 300 feet long and plus I have three other rows so I have about a thousand feet of potatoes. The tall green plants that you're seeing growing next to the potato leaves here is that uh, field peas and they're starting to bloom. Uh, that was supposed to give it extra nitrogen to the crop and I believe it did so very nicely. Now what I noticed about all this is that the field peas are working because now where you see here is that the foliage is not completely chewed off on this plant because I have a lot of field peas around it. And also those field peas give a nice area for beneficial insects. Now if you can see here where the foliage is eating off, there's very little field peas growing around the whole area. So it leads me to believe that I have to do a little bit more next year in planting field peas and other cover crops next to it if I want to be successful in the back to Eden method to get other beneficial insects in here to go over and kill those bugs early. And you can see here that the foliage has not been touched at all and you can see all those field peas around it. So that's a good thing. So I've learned a valuable lesson is to plant more field peas uh, in with the potatoes when I first plant them up and that will might keep those uh, Colorado potatoes beetles at large or off my product. And as you can see here, the potato foliage is in nice shape. It's short, it's not as dark green as I'd like it to be, nor is it uh, very large in nature. But let's dig up this plant and see how many potatoes we have because it's been past 60 days. And let's see what's going on underneath because the foliage isn't always the uh, indication of how healthy the plant is sometimes, especially in potatoes. Okay, let's dig this one up and see what we got. Pretty good root system so far. Nice. There's our old potato, which is being eaten by a bug somehow. Now we have some potatoes here, which is good. Even with the small amount of foliage, I'm still doing pretty good. As you can see here, we have 
One, two, three, four, five, six. There's probably some more, but out of two potatoes. Now, if I left them in longer, you can see that here's a new potato being grown. Here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. Now, I would have to leave these in longer, but that's fine. And you can see how many other potatoes would be growing in here. This is at least uh, six more. Here's a couple more here. Now, if everything went well, uh, I would have got a nice harvest out of this. But the best thing is, I have somebody that wishes to buy these next week, and they need exactly this size. It's a chef, and they cook this without cutting it up, and they make it into, they call it like a candy, I think he calls it like a candy potato somehow. But uh, he's looking for sizes that are pretty much like this. So I'm in luck. So I'm gonna be harvesting this whole row out today and drying these off and then uh, separating them. And then we're gonna plant some okra back in here. Now here's a group of potatoes that the foliage has been eaten away uh, very dramatically. And let's see how they're doing underneath the soil. Again, I have to harvest today. Not good. Very little. A lot of new shoots. So out of three potatoes, we have one, two, three, four, five. But a lot of new ones. So when those beetles hit, they're at the stage where they're producing a lot of the small new potatoes, the baby, the little baby ones you see here from the main root here. And you can see here too, is how the potatoes grow. It's off the main stem that comes from the potato, which is rotten now, and that usually dies off. And then it grows from the, from the stem outwards on a longer, stronger stem or a longer root and that will feed that baby potato. But this does not root at all. This will never make roots, of course, you know? So also too, whenever people say you plant things in your hill, from this point up should be about eight inches. They really very ever rarely grow more potatoes above eight inches. Uh, like all those uh, potato towers you see, everybody says, oh my God, just keep uh, piling stuff on top, you'll get more potatoes. There are a few instances that people do get them, but majority of the time, I'm gonna say about 80% of the time, you do not get them. So here we are with the same variety in our leaves, and you can see it's doing much, much better. Now, to be uh, an open-minded here, the potatoes that were on the other side in the wood chips, uh, it's on the edge of the garden, so basically, or the edge of the field. And I believe that usually if anything ever happens like that, uh, you always get an influx of Colorado potato beetles that come in from the sides always or from the top of the row. So since this is in the middle of both fields, I think I had less pressure on this, which is also another good point to see uh, because you have to have an area where beneficial insects are to try to keep things at bay. Again, this is all the foliage and the leaves. And you can see that it's doing a lot better than it was in the wood chips. And I mounted this up also too uh, because it grew so well. But I do have some damage. And what do I see here? Now, for example, um, here is the larvae right there, right by my thumb. So I'm gonna have to get rid of them uh, today also too by just squishing them or uh, hosing them off if I can. But this is what I wanna see here. If you have a lot of things, you get ladybugs. 
and that's what you want to see here. You want to see those ladybugs. And that's another reason I don't want to spray. Uh, whether they're right or wrong, whether it kills the ladybugs or not, if it's approved by certified organic farmers to spray it, I don't wish to do it because I feel like it's not necessary. I should just put more effort in there and learn. It should be easier for me to learn how to treat my plants instead of thinking about always trying to spray something or whatever too. It just doesn't make sense. Now here's right here another ladybug right in there. So they just need an area that they can go to that has flowers and also an area that's just constantly growing and is healthy so they can survive when there's no other bad bugs around too. They need shelter. And you can see here that things are working very well and nicely inside the leaves. Okay, let's pull this plant out and see what we got going on underneath. Okay, not bad. Lots of roots, but potatoes, not so much. And the main potato is, ooh, this is interesting. The main potato is not rotten yet like on the other one. Uh, that's actually a good sign to keep things healthy. And, but we only have three potatoes here out of one plant. So not a big yield up, a little baby one here. And, but the root system is awesome. I just wish they put out more potatoes. Now, it seems like, it doesn't seem like there'd be, maybe here, just a couple more little baby ones that would come there. So, about the same yield either way. Healthier plant, it seems to be, root system-wise, in the leaf so far. Um, and the, about the same may, many potatoes per plant. Okay, let's try one more, uh, right next to it, and see how we do again also. Now, very easy to harvest. Whoa. I saw it here. There's one. Again, nice root system. Our main potato is still healthy. It hasn't rotted. And a couple other ones, but not a lot, not a lot to go by. But again, the whole thing that I wish to do on my farm is to make easier harvesting. Now, if this was in soil, it would have been a little bit more difficult to harvest, and that slows you down. So in my case, I'm by myself harvesting all the time. So I think I'd rather have an easier harvest because the days are short sometimes, and you just, like, when you get an order, you have to get it out and get it done. I wish to thank you for watching, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe. Uh, I'm enjoying this process. I'm learning a lot. Uh, this is my first year using the Back to Eden method. The leaves I have done before, and I have a little bit of experience with that. But every year I'm learning something better and improving things. And if it wasn't for this mistake, and I'm not saddened by this problem with Back to Eden not working as well as I thought it would, for a simple reason, it gives me an insight of what I should be doing better. Instead of running and trying to uh, do something by spraying, or even it's approved spraying for certified organic farmers, that's not the answer for me, like I said before. It's something about you have to learn what other things nature should provide to that area so it can lessen the problems of bad insects. Thank you again. Enjoy your day.